What does the USDA Rural Development Loan allow you to do? The biggest thing is that no down payment is required. I'm Nicole Nark, Arkansas real estate broker, and today we are talking about one of, in my opinion, the most exciting loan types out there, the USDA Rural Development Loan. So let's get right into it with another video to help you find your way home. 100% financing is available to those who qualify for this loan type, which is awesome. This is unlike really any other loan type out there besides maybe a VA loan. And this is a little bit different because typically, if you're buying a house without a down payment, you would need to not only qualify for a loan like an FHA or a conventional, but then those loan types require down payments. So you would need to combine those with a different down payment assistance program. But with the USDA Rural Development Loan, it is all pretty much rolled into one. So there is just one loan that you get to purchase your home, no down payment required. You can either buy an existing home or you can build a home. So there will be a little bit of different criteria if you want to use this loan type to have a home built. So. Today, we're just talking about the most broad guaranteed program. Who can apply? Applicants must meet the following criteria that we are going to go through. You must have a household income that does not exceed 115% of the area median income where you are trying to buy. So this is a little bit different than some other loan types. I wanna make a distinguisher here before we move on. The USDA loan will look at household income despite who is on the loan or the primary borrower. So where this comes into play is if you have to prove that you are in that 115% of the area median income or below for your household, even if you are the only loan borrower, but maybe you have a spouse living in the house with you that's working, maybe you have a boyfriend and girlfriend that will live in the house with you, or a child even, or anyone who will be living in this house with you. At the time of purchase, who has a job and is making money will need their income included in that household income. So it is not always just the borrower. This is different from a lot of other loan types. So I always like to distinguish that. The household income does differ depending on where you are trying to buy a house. So I will leave several links in the description box. The first one is going to be where you can find out what that area median income is so that you can tally up your household income and figure out if you are in that 115% and under. The second thing is you must agree to occupy the house as your primary residence. So you cannot be using this loan type in order to buy a house and immediately turn it into a rental. You have to have concrete plans to move into the house. I think it's within 30 or 60 days of closing on it. Additionally, you don't just have to be a US citizen. US citizens, non-citizen nationals, as well as qualified aliens who are living in the US can all qualify for this loan type. Now, this is another big one. You must prove that you are unable to obtain conventional financing with no PMI. When the lender is looking at your bank statements and they see that you have a savings account with a lot of money that would cover about 20% of a down payment for the house you were trying to buy, it seems crazy, but they could actually say, no, you're not eligible for this rural development loan because we see that you have that cash in your bank account. Now, typically, lenders love to see cash in your bank account, but because this rural development loan specifically caters to some of those individuals who are a little bit low and moderate income earners, they typically try to make this program only available for people who can't come up with or have a hard time 
coming up with that 20%. Now this may be super self-explanatory, but another criteria that you would have to meet is that you must not be suspended from participation in federal programs in order to qualify for this. So if you look at these five things, this criteria list is pretty broad, which is exciting because sometimes with down payment assistance programs, the criteria can be very, very hard and lots of hoops that you ha may have to navigate. So with this, sometimes I have found with working with clients using the USDA loan, it's not necessarily hard to qualify for it, but sometimes it can be difficult to find a house that will fit the eligible criteria since the house needs to meet some certain things as well. So now that we have talked about who may be eligible to apply, let's go through some of the applicant qualifications so that you can determine whether this might be something that you want to look into for your home purchase. When it comes to income, we have a breakdown between self-employed and non-self-employed individuals. So for self-employed individuals, lenders are going to be looking for one year history on income. Now this does not mean that you have to be at your same job for one year, but they do want to see maybe that you've held similar positions. They want to see that your income has stayed pretty regular. So you're getting paid on a regular basis. Ideally you've made around the same amount or your pay has gone up. Those are the type of things that they're looking for. Now this varies with our self-employed individuals. Self-employed individuals have to show a two year history of working for yourself. Now, I personally feel this one because as a realtor, I fall into this category. So it is difficult, but just understand that lenders do this because if you are self-employed running your own business, that can definitely be seen from a lending perspective as risky. So that's why they want to see two full years of you working for yourself. They'll need to see those tax returns as well. And what they'll do basically before, without going on a full tangent is average out how much you're making in a year and kind of divide that up by month and use that as like what a monthly income would be. Like we talked about in some of the other loan types, FHA, for example, conventional, lenders may want to see that you have certain reserves, like one to two months of your mortgage payment already in your bank account. But with this USDA loan, they do not require anything like that. Additionally, some of you may be really excited to hear this. There is no set credit score requirement. Now, with that being said, lenders do make the decision on whether they are going to approve you for this loan type by looking at how likely you are to repay debts. So if you have lower credit, it doesn't mean that you automatically will not be approved for this loan type. If you can show that you have made regular payments on things like utility bills, maybe on your rent, that can definitely help you with this. But I do want to talk about bank overlays. Now with this guaranteed USDA loan, you are getting this from a lender. It can be a local lender in your area. You do not have to go through USDA, but with that, banks have the right to enforce their own overlays. And one of the things that they can set is they can set their own credit score requirements. So even though USDA does not put out a set credit score that you must have, the bank that you apply with may have a set credit score that they require to use and give you the USDA loan. I always like to mention this because when you apply, let's say you just walk into your random local community credit union and you apply with them for a USDA loan. And let's say they deny you. Ask about overlays because maybe they are requiring a 640 credit score in order to give you that USDA loan. 
but there could be other banks that are doing it at a 620 or a 600. So it's not that you are denied the loan and should give up your home search at all. It could just be that you didn't meet that specific bank's overlay. And the reason that I'm so passionate about sharing this with you guys is because that definitely happened to me when I was applying for my first house. I was in that situation where the first lender I applied with flat out just declined me. I didn't know what to ask to figure out why that occurred. I was a little bit bashful and embarrassed at the same time, but you have every right to understand and know what it is that these banks can enforce and how to figure out what it is about your file that may prevent you from getting that approval if you don't get it right away. They're going to look at how much money you have coming in every month, whether that's hourly or salary, before taxes, how much is coming in each month. Then they are going to compare that to the monthly payment that they are expecting on the house that you want to buy. Now that payment is going to include like actually paying down the loan. It's gonna include that principal, interest, taxes, insurance. They're gonna bundle that all into one. And they want that number to be no more than 29% of your gross monthly income that you have coming in. So if you want to do kind of a quick calculation on how much you may get approved for, that would be a great thing to do. Look at your gross monthly income, figure out what 29% of that is, and that could be like your house payment range. In addition to your payment not exceeding more than 29% of your gross monthly income, they are also going to look at your debt to income ratio. Now, if you're not familiar with your debt to income ratio, I've made a full video explaining what it is and how to figure yours out and how to calculate it. So I will link that above now for your reference. But lenders, when approving buyers like yourself for the USDA Rural Development Loan, want your debt to income ratio to be no more than 41%. So those are the requirements that they are going to be looking for in your file when determining if you would be a good candidate for this loan. Earlier, I mentioned that not only do you have to meet certain criteria in order to get pre-approved for the loan type, sometimes it can be difficult to find houses that match what the criteria are for this loan type. So let's talk through what type of homes you can buy with this loan type. Because with the USDA Rural Development Loan, you do not have to go out and buy a farm or a home necessarily on acres and acres, but they do still set certain criteria that the house has to meet. So the first thing is the house has to be a single family dwelling. So this means that it cannot be an apartment complex, you cannot go out and buy something like a duplex where you live in one side and rent out the other. It just has to be for a single family. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that it can be attached or detached. It can be a condo, it can be a modular home or a mobile home, as long as those are on permanent foundations. So don't think that you couldn't buy a condo with the USDA loan as long as it meets the criteria otherwise, even though it is attached, since it is just the one unit you would own, not the whole thing, it would still qualify. In addition to this, the home must meet HUD 4000.1 standards. Now, these standards are put out every single year by Housing and Urban Development, and they guide a lot of government loans, just like they do the FHA loan as well. So there are certain standards that are set out that houses have to meet in order to be financed with many different types of government-backed residential mortgages. So the reason that I wanted to put this in here is because in most cases, your move-in ready homes that you see are going to meet these standards. However, if you happen to find yourself looking at something that's a foreclosure, that's a short sale, that looks pretty rough around the edges, just know that that may not be up to these standards. And if it's not, it likely will not be able to be 
purchased with the USDA rural development loan. Something else that's really exciting about this loan type is that there is no maximum purchase price. So the purchase price is completely set based off of the borrower's repayment and how much you can afford. If you make a good amount of money and your debts are super low, based off of the last slide when we were talking through some of those debt to income ratios, you could then afford more house since you currently have less debt and then you could probably afford a higher purchase price. So it really just depends on your personal finances how much you will get approved for and what kind of house you can buy. Just because there is no set acreage limit does not mean that you can go and just buy 200 acres in the middle of the woods. Acreage homes have to still be considered common for the area. So if you live in an area where 10 acre homes is the norm, you could probably swing that with the USDA loan. This is specifically for like the guaranteed single family housing. So if you were trying to buy a farm, that would be a completely different type of USDA loan. Just keep that in mind. But if you're in an area where everything is like very small subdivision lots and you want to buy the one house that comes with 100 acres, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it could be a little bit more difficult. Additionally, there are no seasoning requirements, and I'm not talking about walking through your house with a bunch of salt and pepper. I am talking about how long the seller of a home has to own it before selling it to you. So this comes into play if you wanted to buy a house that has been flipped or recently fully renovated. There are some government-backed loans, like FHA loans, that require a certain amount of time where the house has to season and the seller has to own it before they can sell it to someone who, for example, is using an FHA loan. But you don't have to worry about that with the USDA loan. You could buy a flipped house right away as soon as it is completed from someone who is renovating it. So you may be thinking, Nicole, this is all great. It doesn't seem too difficult to find a home that would qualify. That is because in my opinion, we have not talked about the biggest limiting factor. So USDA wants you to purchase a home that is located within a rural area, quote unquote. So a rural area in their terms is defined by either a city that has less than 35,000 people. You could live outside of the city limits of a certain area or you know, any areas that are just going to be completely rural. When you drive around, you're, you're not in a big town, those are likely to qualify. So I will leave a link in the description box to where you can type in certain addresses to see if they would be in qualifying areas. Your smaller cities, your suburban cities, those are gonna be more likely to have qualifying homes than some of your much larger metros. <sighs> Big stretch, this is a lot of information. But if you've made it through so far, and this is all sounding pretty good to you, let's talk about how to apply. So you will contact any USDA rural development lender who has been approved already by USDA. Of course, you know I will leave a link in the description box to where you can find that list so you can reach out to lenders specific in your area. So for everything that we have covered today, this is the guaranteed portion of the loan. Remember, you do not have to go through a local lender. You can go through USDA directly to get this loan type if you choose. That is the USDA Direct. Now, I have made a full video explaining the differences between the USDA Guaranteed Program versus the USDA Direct Program. Either way will give you essentially the same loan where you have 0% down and 100% financing. But each of them have pros and cons and one may suit your financial situation better than the other. So I will link that over here now and I will see you in the next video.